Hello and welcome to this video about the Beta FPV FPV Advanced Kit. We'll go through the binding of the Beta 65 with the transmitter, the connection of the FPV goggles and some basic flight controller software tuning. In order to bind the copter to the transmitter, keep the left trim button pressed while switching the transmitter on. When you hear the Star Wars melody, the transmitter is in bind mode. Then we connect the Beta 65 copter to a power source. We then press the bind button for a few seconds. The bind button is the one further on the outside. Keep some distance between the copter and the transmitter. If Rx and Tx are too close, you will experience Rx loss and the bind process will not work. After binding successfully, we see a solid green light and a blinking red light. Don't worry if it does not work on the first try, just switch off and on and try again. If you use a different transmitter than the one that came with the set, make sure the firmware of the TX and the RX match. In order to receive a video signal and a picture in your goggles, the video receiver has to be tuned. First, switch on the goggles with a long press on the power scan button. Then long press the power scan button again to start the frequency scan. On the lower right corner, we see that the video receiver is scanning for the video signal from the VTX. The receiver automatically locks to the strongest signal, so make sure you see the picture from your copter. BetaFlight is a very powerful flight controller software. It is used on drones of various sizes. So only if you are up to more, we'll go through the basic, the very basic settings to give your start on what's possible. If you just want to start flying right away, we are done here. In the Ports tab, we can configure UART2 for Smart Audio. This will enable the switching of the VTX channel via the OST. Otherwise, we always can switch the channel with the button below the canopy. In the Config tab, we can basically keep the standard settings. However, I recommend disabling the max arming angle by setting it to 180 degrees to be able to arm the copter even if it's upside down. This is a substitute for the buzzer. Also, switch off the telemetry is advised. A bug in the software caused crashes in the past with this flight controller. Also, we don't really need telemetry in this case. We want OSD, anti-gravity and dynamic filters on. Please remember to save after making any changes. Switching to a different tab will discard your changes. In the power tab, we can disable the current meter. We don't have one. Also, add a little to the max cell voltage. This may prevent false voltage warnings. The PID tuning might only be interesting for some more experienced pilots. However, the rate settings are interesting for every pilot. The rates define how the copter behaves to the stick movement. And here is a little trick. You can switch between rate profiles with your transmitter. First, you define some rate profiles. We can use 1 to 3. Then, we need to be in expert mode to see the adjustments tab. There, we can define the right top and bottom button for switching. They are not used out of the box, so we give them a purpose. We enable channel AUX2, the right buttons, for the rate profile selection at slot 1 via channel 2. Well, that's basically it. As soon as the setting is saved, you can see in the PRT tuning tab how it switches through to the rate profiles. It's important to know rates are ignored in angle mode, which is the default mode. In angle mode, only the angle strength is relevant for pitch and roll behavior. But if you want to configure the stick response more freely, you need horizon or acro mode. And just as a remark, acro is rarely used for micro drones. In the modes tab, we define the arm switch. You first need to arm the quad to be able to start the motors. When disarming, the motor will stop. We set horizon mode to the same AUX channel as arm, so we automatically enter horizon mode on arming. Change that to angle if you prefer angle mode. Here you can define the OSD view. Add, remove and place elements on the screen to your needs. I only recommend to keep the screen as clean as possible. Well, that's basically it. If this video was helpful and informative, I would be glad about a thumbs up 
And if you like the content of this channel, please subscribe.